The CFL season kicked off on Thursday with a Grey Cup rematch between the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Montreal Alouettes. And the Montreal Alouettes picked up right where they left off in the Grey Cup playing stingy defense. They were very stout against the run and never allowed Brady Oliveira to find any open holes and uh, find any running room. This is the first play of the game and you can see that Montreal is setting a new line of scrimmage and not allowing Brady Oliveira or the offensive line to get any movement up front. Derek Wigan, number 95, eats a double team and number 94, Mustafa Johnson, gets instant penetration into the backfield and really just cuts off the play. I mean, this is how you play great defense and this is a consistent theme all night right here. You know, they're lining up in their 30 front and then inserting uh, pressure, inserting a blitz from one of their DBs. And he's able to knife in there and, and make a play in the backfield. So, um, you know, Montreal just did a great job of uh, mixing up their looks, uh, aligning in different fronts, not really letting Winnipeg get comfortable uh, and then making plays. Noel Thorpe is known for having aggressive defenses. And on Thursday night, uh, they stay true to form. Here it's second and four, and in second and four in the CFL is usually man-to-man -man coverage. So I'm sure Zach is identifying that it's probably going to be man. You know, he has the DBs all in a line, so he's anticipating man. But, you know, post-snap they rotate, and uh, now they're playing a double cut cover three. And, you know, that makes Zach pat the ball, hesitate, and then Sean Lemon comes up with the sack. You can see it from this angle. Looks like Zach is wanting to throw this double move by Wallatarski, but once he recognizes that it's not man-to-man -man coverage, uh, it's kind of too late. Sean Lemon and Mustafa Johnson is already in his face and he has to eat the sack. It seemed that for whatever reason, the Winnipeg offense was out of rhythm. You know, they weren't making the plays they're usually accustomed to making here on the interception. You know, Zach usually makes this throw. He usually puts that ball in the, in the back pylon where only his receiver can get it, but this time it just comes up short and uh, it's intercepted. These corner passes, these corner routes are a staple in the Winnipeg offense. So, I mean, it's usually on the money. Zach usually puts them right in the bucket and allows the receiver to make the play, but uh, he leaves this one short and Ducroix makes a great play, catching the ball and getting an interception. Here, they're in zero, zero pressure and Zach is short with the ball again, allowing the DB to you know, get in there and, and get the ball out. You know, this is another play where Zach usually puts it into the end zone and lets his receiver run underneath it, you know, for an easy touchdown. But, um, you know, they just seemed out of rhythm. And they, and they tried everything. They brought Chris Strebler into the game to try and ignite the run game. That didn't really work. And even on the plays, they did have some success. Um, you know, like this screen, you see that Montreal's defense is pursuing. And then, you know, Darnell Sankey pops the ball loose. So, I mean, it's a great play by Montreal. Cody Fajardo ran the offense well. He made some throws like this one right here to Tyler Sneed. Uh, Tyler Sneed running the deep out cut at the top of the screen, the wide side of the field. And this is a tough throw, but Cody puts it where only his receiver can make the play. And, you know, Tyler Sneed does a great job of stemming his defender up, giving him a little sauce at the top and then getting out to the sideline, making the catch. Fajardo and Sneed connected again later in the game on a deep pass down the sideline. It looked like the same play that they ran in the Grey Cup. Um, but here, it looks like Winnipeg is playing some sort of match man defense in the red zone where they have some overhangs, but their corner to the wide side of the field doesn't really do a good job of playing 70-30 to his man, allowing Tyson Philpot to uh, catch the ball and make some moves and get into the end zone. In any game, it's the execution level that establishes who wins and who loses. And on Thursday, Montreal flat out just executed better than the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And that's why they were successful and won the game.